In the hushed corridors of antiquity, where the echoes of forgotten civilizations linger, a mysterious artifact emerges from the sands of time. A relic that challenges the very foundations of our understanding of ancient technology. According to those who are not familiar with the ancient battery of Baghdad, it seems to be a clay jar, although an odd one since it has an iron rod sticking out of its top. To the person who discovered the ancient artifact, Wilhelm Koenig, the purpose of the artifact was immediately apparent. It was a historical battery from the Parthian era. One of them was developed millennia before any other specimens that are known. Since that time, the hypothesis has been the subject of intense debate in academic circles, with many people thinking it to be debunked. Consequently, what brought Koenig to this realization? And did he have a point? That is the heart of the enigma surrounding the Baghdad battery. What exactly is the Baghdad battery? Baghdad battery is really a triad of relics that are layered inside one another. There is a little clay pot that, when it was discovered, was 14 centimeters in height. Nonetheless, it would have been higher during its final stages of construction. The top of it, which had been broken off, is said to have been sealed with asphalt. This contained a copper cylinder, which was the second thing, and the cylinder, in turn, contained an iron rod, which was the third object. There would have been a protrusion of the rod through the stopper of the jar. Many people refer to the Baghdad battery as the Wilhelm Koenig battery, which is named after the individual who is believed to have found it. Koenig, who was a painter and archaeologist, and would later become the director of the National Museum of Iraq, did not offer any information on the location, time, or manner in which he arrived at the discovery of the object. It is largely agreed upon that the Wilhelm Koenig battery was discovered in the area of this today known as Kujut Rabu, which is located in the city of Baghdad, which is the headquarters of Iraq. As is the case with many aspects of this artifact, however, the specifics are not certain. There are many who believe that Koenig discovered it during excavation in the year 1936, while others believe that he discovered it in the year 1938 in the basement of the National Museum of Iraq. One of the few facts that is not up for debate is the fact that it originated from a location that was close to the location of the old royal metropolis of Tessiphon. On the other hand, the date of its inception is a different tale. In the history of Iran, Tessiphon served as the capital of both the Parthian and Sasanian empires. Although Koenig thought it was a Parthian battery and dated it somewhere between 150 BC and 223 AD, more contemporary archaeologists have found that it was a Sasanian battery, which dates back to the time period of 224 to 650 AD. This would still be a substantial amount of time before what is believed to be the first ever description of an electric battery, which was written by Alessandro Volta on March 20, 1800. This would be the case even if we were to examine the later end of this date range. Koenig did, in fact, write a study on the issue titled A Galvanic Element from the Parthian Period, which was published in the German magazine Research and Progress in the year 1938, is something that can be said with absolute certainty. At this point, he presented his hypothesis on the function of artifacts for the very first time. So, what was it that made Koenig believe that this was, in fact, an antique battery from Parthian times? Was it really a battery? The issue of whether or not the artifacts in question were components of a battery cell is at the heart of the Baghdad battery enigma. It was not possible for Koenig, the person who first proposed this notion, to find any ancient documents on which to base it. No such documents have been discovered up to this point in time. Why did he arrive at the conclusion that the path in battery was the case? It is possible that he made a note of the fact that the artifact included two metals that had differing electro-potential rates. This is one of the primary components that must be present in order to manufacture a battery along with an electrolyte. An ionic solution, also known as an electrolyte, may have been present in the jar, as shown by the fact that there is evidence to corroborate this assertion. According to the results of the corrosion tests performed on the object, it most likely contained something similar to vinegar or wine at one point in time. Regardless of the circumstances, it is a fact that the Baghdad battery, in its current configuration, is capable of conducting electricity when a solution of this kind is added to it. 
This is about one volt of it. It is possible that the voltage would have been far greater given the presence of cables. In the event that the artifact found in Baghdad was, in reality, a battery, there are a few alternative hypotheses about the purpose for which it was used. What could have powered the Baghdad battery? A number of different applications have been suggested for the Baghdad battery. Medicine has been practiced by a number of different civilizations for a very long time nowadays. As an example, the ancient Greeks discovered that applying electric fish to the foot was effective in relieving pain. The idea that the battery was concealed behind sculptures of idols in order to buzz followers has been put up as a feasible explanation, an act of religious enchantment of some kind. In fact, this was tested out in a documentary that was released in 2005. Koenig, for his part, was of the opinion that the battery was used in the process of gilding, which is the act of covering one metal with another. It is common knowledge that similar tactics were being carried out at that time period in the production of jewellery and other activities, although with more straightforward approaches. In his theory, he proposed that the battery was invented in order to facilitate the electroplating process, which was far simpler. There is no proof of this procedure either at the time it occurred or after it occurred, which is one of the arguments that critics of this hypothesis make. In the meanwhile, there is a substantial amount of evidence that additional techniques of gilding were used, particularly the residue of mercury that was left over following its application in the procedure. One of the most significant shortcomings of Connie's idea is that it does not take into account the power of the Baghdad battery. As it stood, it was only capable of producing around one volt of energy. It is just not possible for such a low amperage to power anything much. Of course, it would not be possible to utilize it for gilding. Despite the fact that there is no proof of ancient wiring expertise, there have been no wires discovered that have the ability to increase power. In addition to this, it would be necessary to continually replenish the electrolyte, which would have been an extremely challenging task given the asphalt stopper that was initially there. It would have been inconvenient if this had occurred. Critics, on the other hand, argue that the absence of any reference of such a device, either at the time or subsequently, is the factor that would ultimately lead to the theory's demise. A curious and unsolved mystery. There is something really appealing about the concept of an old battery. The fact that it may have been a battery, however, does not necessarily indicate that it was one. This is something that many people have pointed out. In addition, it is far more probable that it was utilized as a storage location for scrolls. To accept from the essay, The Enigmatic Battery of Baghdad, written by Gerhard Eggert and published in Skeptoid magazine in 1996. According to my point of view, the magical container theory is far more likely to be true than the power source assertion. According to Thurnshen, 1986, the latter practice constitutes a mystification by science of the object, which is in violation of Occam's razor. Unfortunately, there is now a new mystery surrounding the Baghdad battery, one that prevents or at the very least significantly hampers the resolution of the previous mystery. During the invasion of Iraq in 2003, it was stolen from the National Museum of the United States. It is still unclear where it is located at this time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay charged with the latest revelations from the realms of history and archeology. span Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the conversation alive.